Hi, and welcome to CVS Health Live, the show that delivers timely perspectives and insights on relevant healthcare issues happening right now. I'm Jessica DeMoss, I'm a health innovation reporter, and today we have pulled together a team of experts from CVS Health, and they are gonna answer all of your top questions about the COVID-19 vaccine. So as this rolls out to the general public, you're gonna find out how, when, and where you can get the vaccine, get the latest on safety and efficacy. We'll find out whether or not the vaccine is gonna work against some of the virus mutations that are starting to come. And you'll even find out how to make appointments and whether or not your health insurance is gonna pay for it. So let's introduce our panel without any further ado so we can start picking their brain on this really important issue. So please welcome from CVS Health, we have Chris Cox. He is the Senior Vice President for Pharmacy Growth. We have Dr. Kirsten Anderson. She is the Senior Director for Clinical Solutions. And Dr. Jeffrey Bullock, he's a pharmacist and district leader. Everybody from CVS Health, thank you so much for joining me here today. Great to be here. Great to be here. Thank you. All right, Chris, I want to start with you. I mean, let's back up before we dive into what's next as the vaccine rolls out to the general public. I'd like you to talk about where we're at to date. So I understand that CVS Health has had this vaccination program rolled out for two months, working with long-term care facilities to vaccinate their staff and the residents there, the most high-risk groups. So give us an update on where that program is at today and what we can expect moving forward. Sure, thanks, Jess. And you know, the programs were going really, really well. So the way the CDC designed it was really for each cycle of clinics to take about three to four weeks from the time you know the program really got launched within any given state. And so today we're really right on track with that three to four week commitment that we made uh, to be able to get to each facility, you know, within that time frame to do each of the doses. So we will go to each facility three times, obviously, you know, to give the first and the second dose, but then also a third time to be able to give the second dose to any patients who may not have gotten their first dose until our second visit. And right now, if you think about how the program was designed, um, you know, states were able to activate it in different phases. So they started with skilled nursing facilities, which is the highest acuity level of setting with the most vulnerable patients. And as a, you know, we are completed with the first dose in all of those facilities and about 80% done with second doses. So what that really means is that, you know, almost all of the folks within these facilities are fully vaccinated, you know, to this point. Um, and then if you think about the second phase of the program, which is assisted living and other uh, facilities, we really saw a range of dates in, in terms of when the states actually activated that part of the program, ranging from late December all the way into late January. So again, we're on track with that three to four week cycle but our completion is really on a rolling basis depending on where each state activated. But all in all, we're about, you know, again, 80% done with first doses in all of the assisted living facilities. And we're well on our way with second doses in some of the states that activated that portion earlier. All right, that's incredible progress. So um, Kirsten, I wanna ask you then, so what can we expect as the, gen as the general public? When can we expect to have access to the vaccine? Well, thanks, Jess, and it's great to be here um, with Chris and Jeff. So because the supply of the COVID-19 vaccine is currently limited, the CDC is recommending to federal, state, and local governments the uh, suggestion or the recommendation about who should be vaccinated first. Now, each state is able to create their own plan for prioritization. So I would suggest that people contact their local and state governments to understand the prioritization in their area. The goal here is to get everybody easily vaccinated as soon as large quantities of the vaccine is available. As the supply increases, additional prioritization groups will be added. To that end, on February 2nd, the CDC announced the next phase of the vaccination program called the Federal Pharmacy Program. As part of this program, CVS Health can order vaccine in a limited supply in 11 states starting as soon as February 12th. As soon as we get the vaccine in those 11 states, based on eligibility, patients will be able to become vaccinated in those areas. Okay, and Chris, how will we know when it's our turn? I mean, this is such a massive rollout. So is there anything that will be coming out of CVS Health to help people know when it's their opportunity to go and get the vaccine? Yeah, Jess, it's a great question. And our website is actually set up today 
with an eligibility tracker where you can, you know, enter in the state in which you reside and then understand, you know, resources that will help you know whether or not you're eligible. Additionally, you know, if you're in one of the states where we do have vaccine allocation, um, you know, we will be able to, you know, send out proactive text alerts and others to our patients to let them know uh, that that vaccine is now available and that they can now go on the website to schedule appointments. All right, that sounds awesome. I love it. Make it easy for people to figure out when they're eligible. Make it easy for people to, to know when they need to come back. I love I love any kind of push notification that tells me what to do, when to do it. All right, Jeff, let's, let's talk to you now about what actually happens then when the CVS pharmacies receive the vaccine. I mean, take me into, a, into my corner CVS pharmacy store and tell me what happens there. So who will be administering the vaccine to people? Well, thank you. So CVS Health immunizers include pharmacists, pharmacy technicians and pharmacy interns, as well as other trained healthcare professional, professionals, depending on each state's specific regulations. All CVS health immunizers are certified according to company requirements and trained in the administration of giving these vaccines and hold active CPR certifications. All right, very good. And uh, Kirsten, tell me this. So. There's two different vaccines out there, right? You have the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine, and then there are new ones that are being added. Do you get to pick which one you want, or is, does it, how does that work? Okay, so right now there's two vaccines available, the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. As time goes on, additional vaccines will come to market as they're evaluated by the FDA. As pharmacies, we don't get to decide which vaccine we get. So the federal government decides which vaccine is sent to the immunizers. So where we are doing vaccinations, we are currently offering either Moderna or Pfizer, but not both. So as the supply of vaccines increases, when you go to schedule your appointment, you'll be able to see which of the vaccines you'll be receiving. But I really wanna make the following clinical point. Remember that everyone needs to receive the same vaccine brand for the initial dose and the second dose because the clinical trials have been performed in that way. There's no good evidence that if you get Pfizer once and Moderna the next time, that that would be effective. So I just wanna make sure that people understand, if you get vaccinated with, with Pfizer, stick with Pfizer. All right, so no mixing between the first shot and the second shot. And then Kirsten, let me ask you another question. Is one vaccine better than the other? Is there a difference? So in terms of one vaccine better than the other, Right now, the vaccines have just about equal efficacy. So Moderna has a 94% efficacy and the Pfizer vaccine has a 95% efficacy. These are incredibly strong vaccines. And, you know, we're very excited that, that they are that powerful. Okay. All right, Chris, walk me through the appointment making process for this. So when I go and I make my appointment for my vaccine, am I making the appointment for both shots at the same time or does it go one and then you have to wait and then make the second appointment? Because I know timing is really important, right? Between the first shot and the second shot. So explain how all of that works, please. That, that's exactly right, Jess. So for the Pfizer vaccine, the first and second dose need to be 21 days apart. And for the Moderna vaccine, the first and second dose need to be 28 days apart. And that's really, again, to, to Kirsten's point, it's about how the clinical trials were you know, actually conducted. And so that's what the science you know, has been able to confirm is the effective spacing for the different appointments. So when you go on to your CVS app or to cvs.com or even you know, call an 800 number if you're unable to access a, a digital device, we will actually schedule both of that, both those vaccines for you right up front. Think about it as scheduling a round trip plane ticket. We're gonna know again uh, to Kirsten's earlier point, which of those vaccines is available in the store that you're scheduling your appointment in. So we'll know exactly how far apart those appointments need to be scheduled. And we'll give you those dates right, th right there up front so that you can add that to your calendar. And then the important thing too is we're actually tied completely into our inventory system on the back end so that when you make that appointment, we are securing both of those doses for you. And again, to, you know, it, at some point down the line, when there may be, you know, multiple manufacturers available in the same store, that will guarantee that, you know, you're always set up for that appropriate second dose, because to Kirsten's point, again, if you start with one, you need to complete the, the dose regimen with the same manufacturer. 
Okay, that's so important. I love the fact though that you guys have can't like thought this supply chain part of this all the way through as well because so all we need to do is just make sure that we make our appointment at the same CVS health store and then that's it. We the the doses the second dose is reserved for you once you have booked your appointment for the first one. Is that right? That's right, Jess. And and I will say too, if you are in a circumstance where let's say you're going to be moving around between your first and second dose, we will have the ability you know, to schedule your second dose at a different store. Um, although obviously the, the, the happy path, easy path is, you know, to, to schedule them both in the same store from the get go. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for the happy path, easy path when it comes to saving things are hard enough with COVID, right? All right, um, Kirsten, an- answer me this. So after you get vaccinated, how long before it works? Like, is, it, is this an instant thing once you get your second shot? Are you immediately vaccinated or does it take some time to, to go through your body and work? Right. So it does take some time to ramp up an immune response. So to get the full effectiveness of the vaccine, you need to complete two doses and you need to probably wait between one to two weeks before you can consider yourself 95, 94% um, protected. So after you've received your doses, it's incredibly important to continue to social distance, to wear masks and to practice good hand hygiene. The other thing I really want to point out here is that after even after you've received two doses, we don't really know whether you can be an asymptomatic carrier. So can you spread COVID to somebody else even after you've been vaccinated? Now, how would that work? Maybe you have a little stuffy nose or something and it doesn't really bother you, um, but maybe you could spread that to someone else. So it's important even after you've been vaccinated to continue to socially distance and to wear a mask. All right, Jeff, so I'm gonna ask you probably one of the toughest questions here. How does this get paid for? Does health insurance cover this? I mean, what do people expect when they make their appointment for their vaccine? Are they going to have to pay out of pocket for it? Tell us tell us about how this works. Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you asked that, asked that question. As I'm in stores, that is definitely one of the most prevalent questions that I get asked. And as it should be, because cost is absolutely important when we're thinking about making healthcare decisions. But to put people's fears at ease, there is no, it is at no cost to the patient, right? So COVID-19 vaccine is at no cost to the patient. Um, If you have insurance, we will collect your insurance information and we'll take care of that on our end. If you do not have insurance, it is covered through a federal program. So what we'll need from you is a driver's license or social security number or a state ID. So we'll, we'll get that from you. But once again, is at no cost to the patient. So that's great news. That's great news. I like that news. <laughs> Just make sure you have your paperwork and stuff with you so that you can make sure to take advantage of that. All right, so uh, Kirsten, let me ask you a couple questions about like who should or shouldn't be vaccinated if there's any kind of stipulations around this once it gets down to the general public. Um, as far as people with underlying healthcare com- conditions or people who are immunocompromised, is there anything they need to be aware of with the vaccine? Right, so uh, it's thought and that the people who have underlying medical conditions actually are at higher risk for severe complications if they get infected and come down with COVID-19. So according to the CDC, people with underlying medical conditions can receive the vaccine unless they have had an allergic reaction to the vaccine or to any of the components in the vaccine. For people who have underlying conditions or who are immunocompromised, I would suggest that those people talk to their doctor and make an informed decision together. Okay, so definitely double check with your doctor if you have anything else going on. All right, Jeff, so tell me, you know, about women maybe who are pregnant or trying to conceive or breastfeeding. Should they be getting the vaccine? I know there was some conversation about this and whether or not they were included in the studies that were done on the vaccines. Pregnant and breastfeeding women were not included in the clinical trials, so the data is limited. However, um, what we do know is that pregnancy is a risk factor for severe illness uh, due to COVID-19. So with that being known, the CDC and the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists um, recommend that all pregnant women and breastfeeding women be offered the vaccine, and that's a choice that they need to make with their healthcare uh, professionals. So absolutely, we will be offering that vaccine um, and we'll be, uh, they should be looking at the risk and the benefits, whether to get it or not. All right, Jeff, so what about kids? Should kids get vaccinated or not? Unfortunately, the children were not included in the 
clinical trials as well as the pregnant and the breastfeeding women. Um, for the Pfizer vaccine, the trials included 16 years of age and older. And for the Moderna vaccine, it included uh, 18 years of age and older. Currently, right now, though, the, both Moderna and Pfizer are conducting trials in children as young as 12 years old. Um, but those are not complete. So right now, it is for adults only. Okay, adults only. Got it. Adults only. And Jeff, I want to ask you a, l- a little bit more. If you could maybe dish for us on what you're hearing from people who have already gotten the vaccine. So, I mean, it's it's rolling out. You know, there's there are people who are, you know, uh, frontline first responders who've gotten the vaccine. And I'm sure in your role working with the immunizers, you know, you've probably been hearing some things about side effects. So what have you been hearing there about side effects? And are they the same depending on which brand of vaccine you get? So are the side effects with the Pfizer vaccine the same as the side effects with the Moderna vaccine? Tell us what you're hearing. So the side effects with vaccines are, are pretty common um, with all vaccines. So you're going to have some soreness at the injection site. With these particular vaccines, it may be headache, muscle aches, fatigue, fever, chills. Um, and then there, there are some other adverse reactions that can, can occur as well. That's why it's important that when you come into our pharmacies to get these vaccines, that you wait for 15 minutes afterwards so that we can monitor to see how you uh, reacted to that particular vaccine. I will mention that myself. I got the vaccine, so I got the Pfizer vaccine. And when I got it uh, for the first dose, I had the soreness of the arm, but I was pretty okay. The second dose I got, I had the soreness of the arm and I had more of a fatigue feeling and the headache, but it lasted for about 24 hours. And the similar symptoms for my wife when she got the Moderna vaccine. So that was our experiences. It does range uh, and vary with people, but that is what the, you know, that's what the studies show as well. That's interesting. And I think it's interesting that you had different side effects um, based on which dose you were on. So I think that's really interesting too. I mean, I just feel like that's like your body working, creating the immunity it needs. All right, Kirsten, talk to me about safety and efficacy around the vaccines. Because if you read the news or you, you watch the news, you hear you know some, some questions or, or discussion about you know the fact that the vaccines were developed so quickly at record time. You know, and so there's some questions about are they safe? Are they going to work? So tell us what you know about that. Sure. So these vaccines are very safe and effective. So the vaccines that we're using today from Pfizer and Moderna are 95 and 94% effective. And I wanted to comment on the fact that they were developed quickly. There's not a lot of news coverage about the fact that these vaccines were based on vaccines that have been in research for many, many years. So people were trying to find vaccines for other diseases, and they were able to take that research and use it to create these new vaccines for COVID-19. But it doesn't mean that anything was skipped in terms of safety and efficacy trials. So we have a very strict process in this country around proving safety. And these vaccines were trialed on many thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people to ensure that they are safe and effective. Kirsten, I think that's an excellent point, particularly about the fact that this vaccine is not entirely new, that we haven't started from scratch here, that there was existing research that had been done for years on different vaccines and that we're drawing from that knowledge base. I think that's that's a very important point for us to understand. So thank you for bringing that up. All right, Chris, I want to ask about, you know, the fact that there's two different shots here for each of the vaccines. So tell me about that and why it's important that individuals receive both shots. Sure. Thanks, Jess. And, and look, I mean, the, the, the reality is, you know, both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines were tested with this two dose series. Right. So the great efficacy that Kirsten referenced, the 94 and the 95 percent, you know, are only in the context of getting both of those doses. Right. And and getting that that two dose series really, you know, it gives you a longer lasting immunity Um, So we we believe that the effectiveness and the length of that effectiveness is really tied to being able to complete both of those doses. It's important that you get both of the doses as they were trialed only in that manner. Now, I will say there are some other manufacturers, uh, for example, Johnson & Johnson, who are testing, um, you know, single dose versions of a vaccine. Um, But for now, with the two we have, we need to really follow the science. Right. And I love what you said earlier about thinking about it as though you're booking a round trip ticket. I thought that that was a great analogy. I like that one a lot. All right. So, Jeff, let me ask you this. What if you've already had COVID? 
Do you still get vaccinated or do you have antibodies already? Yeah. So even if you've already had COVID, there's evidence that you can still benefit from getting the vaccine. So at this time, healthcare experts don't know how long someone is protected after recovering from COVID-19. So the natural immunity that you gain from having the infection varies from person to person. So until more data is available, it's recommended that even if you've had COVID-19 and recovered, you should still get vaccinated because it can help you from getting affected again and from spreading, spreading it within your community. Okay. So get vaccinated even if you've already had it. And then Chris, after you've been vaccinated, do you still need to wear a mask? Yes. And I, you know, I think Kirsten hit on this earlier, you know, the, the data really has been proven, you know, against, you know, sickness or hospitalization or death. But what we don't yet know about is whether the vaccines prevent you from necessarily being an asymptomatic carrier of the virus and, you know, potentially being able to spread it to other people, even though that vaccine is preventing you from getting sick or seriously ill. So I, it is really important that CDC has recommended that we continue to follow um, you know, these key guidelines around mask wearing, hand washing, social distancing, you know, until, you know, the, the vast majority of the population has been vaccinated. Okay, Kirsten, I have a question for you that I'm just going to ask, because this one's been at the top of my mind, particularly with a lot of the news that's been coming out about the different mutations of the COVID-19 virus. So will the vaccine protect against these new variations, the new mutations of COVID-19? Right. So we've been hearing a lot in the news about the virus mutating and the different kinds of mutations that are out there. So the good news, there's two actually two pieces of good news. The first piece of good news is that um, both the companies that have, have vaccines authorized in this country, Pfizer and Moderna, have released statements saying that their vaccines are effective against these mutants, which is great. The second thing is that both of these companies are able to sort of tweak their formula for the vaccines so that they can create booster shots against any potential new variants of the of the virus that that for which their vaccine may not be, you know, as effective. But from what we understand, these authorized vaccines are are still effective against these variants. We're going to have to study this as time goes on. You know, viruses tend to mutate we're going to have to keep studying it. But the good good news is we have the technology to be able to create booster shots. Okay. I think this is all, it's so interesting. And I, I, I like where we're at right now. I want to get your, your last thoughts as we um, think about what's next. Because with these different mutations that are starting to happen, it's like we're not through the woods on this yet. And even though the vaccine is rolling out, I mean, we still need to be careful and be cautious and, and you know, protect one another from this, this virus. So, I mean, I'd like to get your final thoughts, you know, and just kind of hear, you know, as we're looking towards the spring, the next couple of months, you know, as the vaccine is rolling out, um, as we might, who knows what's going to happen with these different mutations of the virus. I mean, I'd love to know what you what you hope that people in the general public will, you know, maybe take to heart and what they'll do um, as we continue to move forward um, and make progress against this virus. So, Jeff, I'll start with you. I mean, what do you want the general public to, you know, take to heart um, if you're if you're to leave them with one key message from this uh, episode? Well. Um... One is to get vaccinated. But I would say also with that, please make sure that we are still following um, proper social distancing policies, um, hand washing, um, wearing your mask, because it's, as we get vaccinated, it's going to take a while for the rest of the country to catch up with that. So it's really, really important that we stay vigilant and not get too uh, laxed in those social distancing and proper um, COVID-19 safety precautions. All right, Kirsten, what about you? Key takeaway from this episode on, in terms of the vaccine. I mean, what, what would be the thing that you hope that the general public takes away? So what the one thing that I hope the general public takes away from this is that although this has been a very difficult time for us, it's been a very difficult time in our, in our history, there's been a lot of things that people have had to not do, not see their relatives, not give people hugs, not be in close contact, People have had to social distance, to wear masks. It's hard. It's been hard for us. And I want to say that we are living a unique time in which our science has provided us with a light at the end of this tunnel. And as difficult as it may be over the coming months to continue to social distance, to wear masks, to practice good hand washing, we, ha we will see the end of this. 
And I just want to encourage people to continue to stay strong and we will get through it. All right, Chris, how about you? Last thoughts. What do you hope people take away and take to heart as we get through into the spring? So get the first vaccine that you can get access to. And that's, you know, from a non-clinician, but it's definitely my recommendation to people. And then secondly, look, I think that at CVS, we're excited to be a part of, you know, helping the country return to normalcy. You've heard a little bit today about how our appointment process is going to work. And, you know, I know that it's been frustrating to date for many people because the vaccine supply has been so limited. And I think what you're going to see over the next couple of months as we get into the spring is that vaccine supply will increase. Um, and, you know, uh, organizations like CVS, you know, will be able to offer a really great uh, seamless experience for you to be able to book your appointments and, and come in and get vaccinated. And so I think, uh, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel and uh, we look forward to being able to you know, play a role in, in bringing that light to fruition. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, CVS Health has been at the, you know, forefront of all of these conversations, whether it was about testing and now vaccines. And I can't even imagine, I mean, this is, an, it's a nationwide undertaking. And so it's like the amount of planning and amount of work that must go into all of this stuff and just organizing those appointment systems and the reminder systems and making sure that you have the doses of vaccine available to people. I mean, it's just, it, it boggles my mind to think how much has to be thought through and how quickly you guys have been able to do that. So thank you so much to the three of you for stopping by and getting us all up to speed. I feel like selfishly, I got all my questions answered. I hope everybody who's watching feels that way as well. I'll be bookmarking this so that I can come back to it if it takes a little bit for me to get um, to the priority level needed to get the vaccine. But I appreciate all of your insights. So thank you guys. Chris Cox, Kirsten Anderson, Jeff Bullock, all from CVS Health. We appreciate your perspective. Thank you so much for all of the great information about the COVID-19 vaccine. And if you guys want to find out more, please visit CVS Health's website. There's the COVID Vaccine Resource Center there. You can check out all the details, maybe sign up for those alerts so that you can be sure to get your vaccine as soon as it's available. I'm Jessica DeMassa. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of CVS Health Live. Mm -hmm.